Good morning and welcome to another session for this week as we walk through the Gospel of John and together working through the Bible plan Gospel of John by Vernon McGee and this morning I'm, I must admit that this is quite one of my favorite uh, books in the sense that this is the the book where Jesus forgives the woman caught in adultery and when we read John 8 and, I, and today I want to read um, John 8 for us because it's quite important to to realize that there's various angles to look at what happens here in John 8. So I'm going to read out of the New King James Version. But Jesus went on, went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came up, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the, in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. What a powerful, powerful story. Now, we always look at the woman and the fact that Jesus forgave her. But I wanna, want us to look at a different angle. And this is that of the Pharisees and the fact that they came to test Jesus. And what this story really reminds us of is that remember Jesus that was without sin and John writes, um, John writes about this and Vernon McGee highlights this in, in, in the initial um, daily devotional. But it's quite profound in that Jesus that was without sin had all the right to condemn this woman. But what really is quite astonishing is the fact that what happens here happens in our lives today. When Jesus arrives, we are convicted. When Jesus highlights and comes as the light, sin is exposed. And what happens in this moment when Jesus says to the Pharisees, those with, without any sin, throw the first stone. What happened at that moment is light shown the darkness. Light exposed the darkness. Light convicted the darkness. And when we're in the presence of Jesus, we tend to not always want to be confronted. And a lot of times we stay away from the intimacy with Jesus because we are concerned, we are afraid that we will be convicted. We, will, we are afraid 
that we would be caught out, wanted. But Jesus is the light. And the light has come to set us free. And this whole passage, this woman caught in the act, Jesus that is without sin, did not condemn. And this morning, and as you've worked through this week, working and reading through John 8, please stay with one section per week, but meditate on this section. I want to encourage you, if in this moment you feel condemned, in this moment you feel bound by sin, in this moment you are afraid to face Jesus, you are afraid to be convicted. This, se this session, this, se this John 8, this session, this uh, story tells us about the heart of God. Our hope, our light, our life is not based on our deeds. It's not based on our egos. It's not based on our knowledge. It's based on who He is. And Jesus does not condemn. Jesus came to set us free. But to be free, it is important that we are confronted with the darkness. It is important that we recognize our sin so that when He talks to us in love, He can say to us and we can hear, do not sin anymore. But go in His peace and in His light and in His love. The Pharisees couldn't throw the stones. The religious leaders couldn't throw stones. And maybe in your life, because of religion or tradition or lawfulness of people, um, lawlessness, you might have been placed in a come to a position in your life that you do not feel worthy. You feel that your sins are too big for Jesus to forgive. You feel that His love is not sufficient. This morning I want to tell you through the testimony of this woman, the testimony of what Jesus has done, that as light, yes, His light does show you your weaknesses does show you your sin. But when we come to Him and we acknowledge our sin, we repent our sin, He sets us free. He does not condemn us. If we continue in sin, we will be condemned. So let this week be a week when you read through John 8, where the love of Jesus, the hope, of the world, the embrace of His presence, touch your heart as you tr entrust Him with your life, entrust Him by laying down your life to take on this life of light which He is. Be encouraged in this week, be encouraged amidst the challenges that you might be going through, that Jesus is our light. And daily let the Holy Spirit guide you to renew your mind, to show those things that stands against the nature as we walk in and we've come to a place of dying to self and taking on the life which is in Jesus. Jesus proclaims, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And when we walk in this light of life, we become the light, because He is the life in us unto one another. So the second challenge I then have for you this week is be light for others. Be Jesus for one another. And be encouraged that no matter what you have done, Jesus loves you, 
and desires for you to find life and light in Him. Have an awesome week. Thank you.